Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Oh, let me try and get a bit of the frost off the windscreen for you. Look at that. Oh, hang on. I've got a light on. What does that mean? He's got a door open. Oh, it's alright one. Hang on, I'll be right back. Let's try that. Hey, presto! That's very weird. I'll be right back again. Right, third time lucky. Yes, it's gone off. Oh, I put my briefcase in the back and then I got my defrosting glove out of the other side and completely forgot. So what are we gonna do? Should we go down the windy roads that are possibly icy? Or should we go down the fast roads? Let's go down the fast roads because I'm a bit on the late side today. Let's get that window down so I can see what's coming. Well, no, there's a car. Now we can go. Oh, this is the effort, the effort. We're getting going in the morning on a frosty day. Now I've got to defrost the back windscreen. There we go. So, wow, that was a that was a weird start, wasn't it? How are you? I hope you're well. I, uh, I'm back from Gambia. Two weeks in the sun, 30 degrees. It's a bit discombobulating, you know. You go from eating mostly fruit and fish and walking on the beach three or four miles a day to uh, getting totally stressed out in the surgery and spending all day sitting in front of a computer pressing mouse buttons not so much fun I've got to add very stressful diet changes you go back to eating cheese sandwiches in the evening oh. sleep patterns are all up the spout again Waking up at four or five o'clock in the morning. One night going to bed at half past six. Next night going to bed at half past eleven. So. I'm going in to see a bloke this morning. He's uh came to us from the NHS, he wanted to have two teeth out. He had nothing but antibiotics. He got a he got a positive thing on his notes saying his doctor said that he mustn't have teeth out in general practice. And uh, so he said to me, Can you take these teeth out? I said, Look, I'm gonna have to get your doctor to rescind his he's advised that you shouldn't have them out of general practice because um, however much I think we'd probably be able to do it the general dental council have got no sense of humour if they see a note from your doctor saying that under no circumstances should this boy have his teeth out in general practice and then in front of them they've got a general practitioner who's decided just to ignore that note and take the teeth out and as a result you had a clot on the brain or a bleed that you know meant you ended up in A&E, such as it is. Um, you know, they're not gonna be at all sympathetic to the fact that I decided to do you a favor. And, and that's on record. I mean, you know, that's not just in these circumstances, that's in any any circumstance where you give someone a, some painkillers because someone else has seen them for a, because they've knocked their jaw playing rugby and then you you miss as the original dentist has missed the fact that they've got a hairline fracture of the jaw then you're just as culpable as the as the guy who did the original examination even though all you've done is 
he's, you know, heard, heard about the pain and was kind of painkillers. So, anyway, uh, I wrote to the doctor. A month went by, nothing. And then after a month, he uh, got in touch and said, have you heard anything? We said, no, not a dicky bird. I said, I'll chase them up. So I, wrote, I got in touch with them again, nothing. Uh, and this is because these sort of inquiries go to the bottom of their pile. They, they're like, I should imagine for the most part, they're men. And so men and women have very different problem solving methods. You have to read the book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus to understand this. Men tend to do the easy stuff first. You know, they, they've got a pile of a hundred things they'll divide that into 50 things they can do straight away and 30 things they can do with a bit of work and 20 things that are really a pain in the ass. And they'll, however urgent they are, they'll put them last. Anyway, uh, you know, so, so, so they can say, oh, I've got 70% of my work done, whereas in fact they haven't. And uh, the, the Seven Habits of Highly uh, Effective People, I think, by Stephen Covey also covers this idea that you should triage things on the basis of how time sensitive they are and how urgent they are and not necessarily how easy they are to do and how much you think you can knock them off in 30 seconds. And a good example of this is a communication from my accountant. I mean, I have a checkered history with accountants. I, I have a pretty low opinion of the work that accountants do. I think they're really just uh, totally, for the most part, totally they're intermediaries, rentiers, who charge you money to put your accounts in a format that's acceptable to the inland revenue. They don't add any value to anything. They've never ever had a piece of useful advice off an accountant. I, perhaps I'm going to the wrong accountants, but I haven't just been to one accountant. I mean, the only time my accountant threatened to give me any useful advice was when. I was a bit slow paying his bill, and this was when COVID came in, and they wrote a very nice letter about saying that we understand everybody's in financial trouble, and that if you need a bit of time to pay your bill, take your time, take your time. It's not a big deal. Pay us when you've got the money sort of thing. And so I thought, oh, that's good. And then like three months later, he wrote and he said, look, Derek, he said, I've got a ton of stuff, a ton of advice I want to give you. But he said, I can't really uh, start next year's advice until you've paid last year's bill. So, <clears throat> I mean, it was bullshit. And I knew it was bullshit. And, and he, he might have known that I knew that it was bullshit. But anyway, <coughs> I paid the bill and waited for this torrent of advice to come in. And of course, it never materialised. They'd never given me any flat tax planning advice or any financial advice. The only time I asked them for advice was on crypto and, and that, what they did was they just sent me back all the advice that I'd given them in the past because that was the sum total of all their knowledge on it was what they put into their into their knowledge base on crypto about you know what from from what they gleaned from me. So I ended up paying for my own advice back. So you can see why I'm just a bit less than chuffed with accountants. Anyway, I uh, sent off my accounts and uh, my financial year finishes on uh, September 30th and the tax is due on the 1st of June. Now, if on the 1st of October I they've done my accounts and I would then have October, November, December and January, February, March, April, May. So, what's that, nine, eight or nine months to, to you know, to prepare myself for the whatever tax I've got to pay, whether it's zero or a hundred thousand pounds. But you know, they they wrote me this letter and said, "Oh, um, can you uh, hang on a bit because uh, you know you you finished in uh, when I mean, you can't send your accounts off at the end of September because it's not until the end of October that you've got all your September bills in." So really the earliest you could feasibly do anything would be the end of October. And so by the time I, you know, got all the bills in and got everything in order, it was like middle of November, early December. So I sent the accounts in and then they then say, uh, do you mind if we just don't do this at the moment because we're very busy with our personal tax 
accounts, which are all due in on the uh, 31st of January or whatever, and um, calculated tax, and everybody waits till the last minute to do it. And so uh, December, what with the Christmas holidays and January, are our busiest time. So do you mind if we don't do your corporate accounts until the new year? So I'm fine, all right, fine. That shaves probably a couple of months off the amount of time I've got to make preparations for whatever tax bill I'm going to get. But, you know, what are you going to do? Come on, come on. Let me just go around this. Oh, yes. Look at that. That's St. Conius looking after me. So, anyway, they've written me a letter towards the end of January saying, oh, okay, now we're ready to do your accounts. Can we do, can we have X, X and X? Now, the trouble is, of X and X, I think I've already sent them. Because I know, I know pretty much what uh, they need. I mean, you know, they need your bank account statements, don't they? they you know what they need. So when I send them my accounts, I don't just send them my back up of my computer accounts. I send them the um, uh, the bank statements and everything, and I zip it all up. And it's very very organised, as you'd expect from me. And and now I've got an email saying, "Well, we're about to start work on your account, so can you please send us blah 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 blah." So and I'm looking at this email thinking. Actually, I think two-thirds of what they're asking for actually was in the original email that I sent them in November. But what they've done is, instead of looking at what was in the attachment that I sent them, they've just decided to bang off another email, which they probably copy-pasted from the last email they sent me last year, just saying, this is what we need. So, I mean, I'm going to... I've got my choices of this. I either just <clears throat> look it all up again, <laughs> and zip it all up again and send it through to them which might be the quickest way of doing it but it obviously involves me duplicating work or I could find the email that I sent them and find out what I sent and then check it against the checklist of what they want and say well okay I'm going to send you X and Y but Z, A or B you add in November which then opens the possibility of them saying that they're going to have to go back and say oh you know find it or if they can't find it say yeah you might have done but we've lost it which is why we asked for it again or um but anyway my point is that um this is going to involve you know this is not just like a quick banging off a reply to an email this is I'm going to have to go back and find out what I did send them and then and if I there's something that they want that I haven't sent them then I'll I've got to send that so so that's then you know that's taken me like 10 days to get around to replying to that just because although it is um, urgent and I want the results it's time sensitive and, and important it's just at the back of the queue because of the amount of, and not only that, but the unnecessary work. You know, the fact that I'm pretty sure that two or more of the things they're asking for, they've already got. So that annoys me because they're just creating work. There's, I'm paying them like three, four thousand pound a year to prevent. Do you know, I'm not at all sure this, all this fog is not from that chimney we just went past because it wasn't foggy out the road. And it's got an horrible stink <clears throat> to it. I wonder if that's chimneys precipitated all this fog in this area. Anyway, well, we're out on the East Dunnet Peninsula, so I mean, it's uh, it is a bit has a bit of a microcosm of its own. I, I tell you, and full props to the people who are still driving seventy mile an hour in this fog. I mean, you know, I'll be one day I'll be driving past them all smashed up and smoking in a 10 car pile up but you know, I, I probably did it myself when I was younger yeah so so this letter that's arrived on this GP's desk 
and saying, could you please confirm that, you know, this advice has been rescinded, it's sort of, it's going to require some work, isn't it, on their part? Oh, now, am I cheeky enough to nip up the outside lane and turn right? Am I? Am I? Depends on the difference in, now that's a big difference, isn't it, in the, in the length of the queue, so. I'm afraid I'm going to have to say yes, I am cheeky enough to do that. I'm sorry, I know speak English. Now the trick is to wait until someone comes along and then you get back in front of everybody. But you can't do that. That's alright. There we go. Who dares wins? So not only does it require them to do a bit of research and read some notes, it's also not really in connection with their work, is it? It's in connection with my work, so it's low priority. And um, the fact that the patient's in pain doesn't seem to matter to doctors. For some reason, I don't know why. I mean, most of their patients are sick, aren't they? Their, their patients are sick and dying. <coughs> That's the problem that they have to put up with. They don't really have a lot of, a lot of patients in pain, I would say, not like dentists do. So they don't really seem to understand the concept of trying to get someone out of pain quickly. And um, the other thing, of course, is that it's sort of laying them open to uh, the General Medical Council, isn't it? Because let's say I get a letter off them saying, oh yeah, no problem, we'll, uh, we'll, you know, we'll say that he's okay to have a tooth out of general practice. Then, and then I take it out and then he bleeds all over the place and has to be taken into A&E. Then they're going to be up for the GMC, aren't they? For, you know, rescinding advice, which in hindsight looked extremely sensible and which they overwrote. So... Well, they're not going to do that. I mean, in practice, they, they might think that they could do that, but they're going to word it in such a way as to say, well, you know, you, you need to make your own decision on it. Which, for many dentists, has to be enough. It's, you know, sometimes you say, "Can is it all right to do this medical thing? And the doctor will say, well, you know, you're the dentist, you decide. And... <clears throat> In a way, that's probably just about all you need, you know, that's just enough to get your foot in the door and say, well, you know, if you're giving me the, if you're saying it is something which I can decide on, then then that was my decision. Whereas at the moment, this they're saying this is something that I definitely cannot decide on, you know, it's a medical issue and I, I, and he shouldn't have a tooth out in general practice. Now. Yesterday he rang up again, because I'm coming to the conclusion of this story, but well, I'm, 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 I'm not yet, I'm not, but I am at some point. And um, he said, you know, I'm in agony from these teeth. Have you heard anything from my GP? And uh, we said, no, still nothing. And he said, well, you know, that." and he's like, oh, well, that's it. You know, I'm just going to go down the practice. You can't get anywhere on the phone. I'm going to go down the practice. I'm going to sit on the floor in the waiting room and I'm just going to, you know, kick off, so I think it was his exam, I'm going to kick off. <coughs> and so we're like, fine. If that's, you know, I mean, you know, that's not entirely inappropriate, is it? Considering that they've taken like eight weeks to not even reply when when he's in, been in pain the whole time. So, and this is starting to mirror, this is more and more the advice that uh, patients are getting, that if you ring up... Um, the dental helpline and say I need a dentist or what, what's more uh, likely that you say I've got a dentist but my dentist can't see me for three months and I'm in pain uh, what do I do and the helpline has said to patients to my certain knowledge that um, what you need to do is go and sit in the dentist waiting room and refuse to leave until they deal with you now I've never in my in my career as a you want to go? Yeah. I've never in my career as a dentist ever heard uh, a statutory helpline give advice to patients to 
harass or otherwise <laughs> carry out acts of civil disobedience uh, for you know to obtain NHS dentistry that is and every thing I hear is an escalation you know it's something more that uh, that you couldn't make up and yet he's actually you know, because it's fin de regime and everything's collapsing you hear these more and more ludicrous uh, stories about you know the two unit cantilever bridge that replacing the three unit and the uh, the dentures that are made over the stumps because they don't do the extractions and and all this all this stuff you know and the fact that half the budget is seems to be going on mouth guards night guards now because they're very easy to do you know one impression and you get 12 udas for it uh, so everyone's got a night guard especially coming up to uh, uh, 31st of March which is the end of the year for the claiming treatment so and people want to make the points up so they what they do is they do something that's the simplest thing that attracts the maximum points and that's a night guard so anyway he went down there and he said um, he rang us up again and he said look they confirmed that it's probably okay but um, you know would it be all right if um, can, can I just can I just tell you that they said that it was okay? And I, well, he obviously said no. He said, well, would it be any good if they rang you and said it was okay? And I said, no, I want, because I can't, you know, I'm not going to record this phone call, so I'm going to need something on the record. Uh, but I said, I'll be quite happy to accept an email. And he's like, okay, I'll, uh, they'll email you. So I, uh, when can you see me? I said, I can see you 8.45 tomorrow morning, right? So, or oh, in about five minutes, as it's called. So, <coughs> so, but I said, I'd need to have the email by then, you know. So he said, all right then. He said, I'll email you. He said, I'll, I'll give you a ring at 8.30 tomorrow and just confirm that um, you've received the email and that, then I'll then come in and have these two teeth out in, in, in half an hour, you know. So this is the sort of pressure that we're under. I've got 30 minutes <clears throat> to get in, read the email, get him numb and take out two teeth, which are, um, you know, and probably going to need packing and suturing. Assuming that they're easy teeth to take out, you know, they're not surgical. So, of course, what do you expect? No sign of any email overnight, nothing. So, this morning, what we're probably going to do is we're probably going to get him in and just give him some more antibiotics because he hasn't had any for three months. And uh, that this is the NHS solution to everything now is hand out antibiotics like Smarties. But yesterday wasn't a good day anyway, because you know all, all the ambulances were on strike, all the nurses were on strike yesterday. So there's no way I was going to do a, you know, potentially disastrous couple of extractions on. Um... All right, Mr. GL66JHV. Just didn't feel like waiting in the queue. I see. Oh, well, they are going right, actually, so, okay. I'll give you that, I'll give you that. Usually they push in here. So, I'll turn up and we'll see um, what the situation is. I mean, you know, ideally, he'll be standing there with a letter, won't he, from the GP? Saying, yeah, go ahead. We're going to be running a bit late anyway because of the traffic and also because um, because I don't for a minute think it's going to take 30 minutes to take these two teeth out unless they're loose. So they have advertising hoarding going up there. They're going to advertise the new houses. Can't believe it. The construction industry apparently is supposed to be in the doldrums. And yet, if you look at that building site back there on the left, 
and you look at this building site that's going to come up after the next roundabout, you wouldn't think so. Problem is, it's very, uh, it's very high density housing. It's basically it's flats, and or as the Canadians would call them, condominiums, um, with with uh, you know, not much in the way of shared space. You can see all the scaffolding here, look, and there's several blocks, and each block's three stories tall. So, you know, there's going to be a few hundred uh, houses there, households. But I don't know about where the uh, kids are going to play. Mind you, there's some big playing fields over the road, so... They're all going to come on the market for several hundred thousand pounds each, so... And then there's some more going up on the left here. Right, so that's today's sorry tale of woe. Accountants and doctors leaving patients in pain. But I'll let you know how it went. Perhaps I'll do an addendum on the way home. Won't be long now, soon be dead. All right, lovely, nice to talk to you. Bye.